Hi there, I'm the Myth Keeper. Welcome back to my channel. This week we're doing another video in my religion series and I'm talking about Agathians. Agathians is my third video in my uh, series about the Imperial Lords. So I've done Angels, I've done Archons, today I'm doing Agathians, and in a few weeks you're going to get another video about the Azatas, and that will round out my full series on the Imperial Lords. If you're new here and you enjoy Pathfinder content, be sure to like and subscribe, check out my other videos. If there are other types of demigods that you'd like to hear about, let me know in the comments below. I read all the comments. Thank you so much. Enjoy the video. As discussed in my previous video on the Imperial Lords, in the three good-aligned outer planes, which are Heaven, Nirvana, and Elysium, there can be found four post-mortal races, Angels, Archons, Agathians, and Azatas. So far in those other videos I have discussed the Angels and the Archons, and in this video I will discuss the Agathians. Agathians live in Nirvana. Of all the good-aligned planes, Nirvana is the plane of the greatest harmony. The final destination of good-aligned mortals who have sought to live in peace with their environment. Whereas heaven is a place of goodness, community, and law, and Elysium is a place of goodness, freedom, and independence, Nirvana is the balance of the two. Like heaven, it is about interconnectedness, but not with culture and society, rather it is about interconnectedness with the environment and the world. Like Elysium, it's about the individual too, but it's about personal introspection, reflection, and enlightenment, rather than about freedom and self-expression. Because of the tight connection between Nirvana and the concept of balance with the natural world, the most abundant post-mortal forms of Nirvana, the Agathians, tend to take on animal-like forms and features. In Nirvana, they dwell in beautiful natural environments. Here there are few cities, and many post-mortals who do not become Agathians will actually become magical animals themselves, known as foo creatures, a subject I'll touch on in this video as well. Unlike angels who frequently travel across plains as messengers, archons who are often called upon to wage war against fiends in distant realms from heaven, or azatas who delight in the joy of exploration, Agathians rarely venture beyond their home plane unless they are summoned. However, their natural inclination towards meditation and introversion swiftly diminishes when an Agathian realizes that leaving their plane can provide assistance to a mortal soul in jeopardy. Nonetheless, opportunities for such occurrences are pretty scarce in the idyllic realm of Nirvana. Agathians generally possess an aura of mystery and wisdom, often expressing themselves through enigmatic aphorisms and metaphors. They generally prefer the tranquility of an enlightened community characterized by mutual respect. However, they readily tap into their animalistic ferocity, speed, and strength when necessary to protect themselves and others from evil forces. Their characteristics of peaceful wisdom and patience enable them to serve as mediators in conflicts among other celestial beings. Both free-spirited Azatas and order-minded Archons frequently accept Agathian arbitration as a fair and reasonable method to settle disputes between the forces of good. The Types of Agathians the least of the Agathians are the Sylvanshi, with a form, size, and appearance of a sleek domesticated cat, typically weighing only 20 pounds on average. Their distinct violet eyes and patches of different colored fur on their chests can give them away when not disguised, however. Flying also immediately reveals their true nature. As a result, they only take to the skies in trusted company, preferring to avoid detection whenever possible. Unlike other more human-like Agathians, they blend seamlessly among ordinary animals, allowing them to serve as the watchful guardians of the mortal world on behalf of the benevolent plains. They can sporadically be found across Galarian, roaming hills, forests, plains, and diligently observing for signs of malevolent influence. Like other lesser post-mortals, including Lantern Archons and Archive Angels, Sylvanches often serve goodly spellcasters as familiars. In this role, Sylvanches act as moral guides, dutifully steering their mortal companions away from corruptive forces. Sylvanches have an aversion to direct combat, even when faced with demons, devils, or other fiendish threats, and they are prone to fleeing when confronted. When forced into battle, they tend to rely on tactical advantages, numerical superiority, or the element of surprise. They use their magical abilities to temporarily overcome their physical weaknesses and can dissolve into mist to evade danger. Vulpinals are among the smallest of the Agathians, standing at approximately 3 feet in height and weighing around 50 pounds. They possess a sociable and expressive nature, making them the most outgoing and friendly members of their kind. Furthermore, they exhibit a penchant for traversing the plains extensively. Vulpinals take the form of humanoid foxes, often adorned with vibrant fur that ranges from shades of red or red-brown though silver is not uncommon. Notably, their tails are as long as their height. 
They often serve as bards and scholars of the Agathians. They dress in practical attire with small embellishments reflecting their creativity and individuality. A typical Volpinal tends to prefer a life of solitary travel, although they may form pairs or small groups when they encounter like-minded individuals who have much to offer in terms of knowledge and experience. They particularly cherish the company of Lilins, winged desatas who can effortlessly carry the Volpinals due to their child-sized stature. This grants Volpinals numerous opportunities to share their stories. Indeed, few things bring greater joy to a Volpinal than imparting their wisdom. They assume the role of sages of the plains, teaching songs and dances from distant lands, and composing poems that celebrate the beauty found in the natural world. While their inherent nature leans towards gentleness, they readily engage in combat to defend beauty, especially when their magic can enhance the abilities of other, more powerful celestial counterparts. Gullivals are only slightly larger than Vulpinals, standing at approximately four feet in height, but are much more ferocious than their short stature might suggest. They resemble anthropomorphic wolverines, with a coat of grey and black fur and distinctive white stripes that run along their snouts. They possess fearsome digging claws that double as formidable weapons. The core value that guides a Gullival is aggressive protection, making them one of the most militant among the otherwise peace-loving Agathians. With a relentless tenacity, a Gullival launches into action to safeguard others, showing a strong inclination towards assuming the role of guardians for children and the elderly. While driven to protect those who may be defenseless, Gullivals are also known for their grumpy temperament and impatience with social formalities. When not engaged in assisting those in need, most Gullivals prefer to live as reclusive hermits, seeking solitude and introspection. Prochials, typically measuring between 5 and 6 feet in height and weighing about 180 pounds, are mischievous Agathians who derive great pride and delight from operating just beyond the boundaries of imperfect mortal societies. Unlike many Agathians who originate from the souls of those in harmony with the natural world, Prochials are born from individuals in harmony with more urban environments, such as small communities and villages, or even larger cities. Prochials possess remarkable shape-shifting abilities, effortlessly assuming the form of any humanoid creature that they might have encountered during their travels. However, their preferred form is that of a humanoid raccoon, a natural creature that readily adapted to the changing world. Prochials perceive society and its constituents as interconnected entities in a symbiotic relationship. They firmly believe that true happiness and freedom for individuals can only be achieved within a society that offers access to luxury, commerce, and choice. In their perspective, society exists as a framework centered on the liberation of the individual. It is of utmost importance to Prochials that every individual recognizes that society is not something separate or superior to themselves, rather an intrinsic part of it, and vice versa. A common saying among Prochials is, you are not in the city, you are a part of the city. Often spoken to serve as a reminder to those they encounter that every member of the community holds significance. Avorals stand at a mighty height of 7 feet, but yet weigh a mere 120 pounds because of their light bones. Their form is predominantly human-shaped, although their upper humanoid limbs contain majestic wings. Adorning their avian-like head is a feathery cowl, typically displaying hues of brown, white, grey, or golden feathers. Their facial features are human, but may possess bird-like qualities, such as a prominent nose or piercing eyes. Much like their avian counterparts, Avorals possess exceptional vision enabling them to discern intricate details even from great distances. While on their native plane, Avorals find contentment soaring through the clouds and engaging in thrilling diving contests amidst the mountain peaks. However, during times of war, Avorals assume the vital roles of scouts, spies, and messengers for the Agathians. Their incredible swiftness, unparalleled eyesight, and magical abilities make them capable of infiltrating areas unnoticed, spying on the inhabitants, and silently communicating with local fauna to gather additional intelligence often departing swiftly through flight or teleportation with a comprehensive report before they are discovered. They excel in hit-and-run tactics, and often bear the responsibility of transporting other celestial warriors to the battlefield. Servanals, also referred to as the Knights of the Agathians, have earned an impressive reputation for their skill in battle, noble demeanor, remarkable wisdom, fearlessness, and their willingness to lead by example. Appearing like a centaur, with the lower body of a great elk and a human torso, they stand at an impressive height of nearly 11 feet, though a significant portion of their stature is due to their magnificent antlers, which can span up to 4 feet in width. These antlers possess a resplendent sheen reminiscent of beaten bronze, while a delicate fuzz of golden down adorns their entire bodies, particularly along the shoulders and neck. 
Draconals are the greatest among the Agathian kindreds, often standing between 10 and 12 feet in height in their natural form. Draconals are mighty Agathian lords, few in number and greatly removed from mortal affairs, and are the direct agents of the gods and the Agathian imperial lords. Patient and ageless, they plan for the long term, which often frustrates mortal creatures who seek to gain their assistance with a threat in the here and now. A draconal would rather support or enhance a group of heroes than tackle a problem directly, maintaining its focus on plainer matters. Draconals are attuned to nature and believe in the cycles of life and death. Though they are good, they understand that the presence of evil gives good creatures something to strive against, preventing stagnation and complacency. This means their outlook sometimes appears almost neutral, though they cannot abide suffering and do make efforts to combat evil when they deem it necessary. A draconal's coloration represents mystical elements relating to energy, life, and the natural world. These colors are normally chromatic rather than metallic, and an ignorant person seeing a draconal's colors may mistake her for an evil half-dragon. However, some draconals do have metallic or gem-like colorations as well. For example, a yellow draconal may appear mustard yellow or metallic gold, while a white draconal may be chalk white, pearlescent white, or metallic silver. Draconals are in fact capable of changing their own coloration after lengthy periods of meditation, but normally only do this in response to some evil that requires their direct attention. This change affects the draconal's personality and may alter their physical shape or apparent gender. Draconals commonly appear in the colors of black, white, green, red, and yellow, but not typically blue. In addition to the Agathians, the plain of Nirvana is filled with unique animal forms known as Fu creatures. Fu creatures are animal forms formed of mortal quintessence that encompasses a diverse array of animal types, commonly summoned to the material plane as guardians, with Fu dogs and Fu lions being the most prevalent forms. However, in the untamed realms of Nirvana, there exists a multitude of Fu creatures corresponding to every animal species in existence. Nirvana's Fu creatures possess a light-hearted demeanor, engaging in frolic and play with all who wish to join them, even those who would typically be their natural predators. Eager to assist any Agathian who seeks their aid, Fu creatures readily extend their spirit of cooperation to other visitors, as long as they are treated with kindness and respect. The most formidable among the Fu creatures are the Imperials. In general, each species of animal is represented by a single Imperial Fu creature in Nirvana at a time. When an Imperial Fu creature perishes or embarks on an extended journey to another plane, a new Fu creature ascends to assume the vacant role, ensuring the continuity of representation for that particular species. The Agathian Imperial Lords Barnaral Barnaral, the tempered inventor, possesses a commanding presence, his robust arms adept at stoking forges and shaping metal. Atop his shoulders rests the head of an elephant, adorned with silver skin, wise eyes, and magnificent ivory tusks. He dons a meticulously crafted leather apron, adorned with intricate engravings that depict symbols of industry and invention. Images of anvils, books, flasks, forges, honeycombs, kilns, pulleys, and water wheels. With precise skill, the tempered inventor wields a razor-sharp sickle, tending to his meticulously cultivated garden of miniature trees. While Barnaral prefers to spend his time within the confines of his workshop, there are occasions when he personally visits gifted artisans, especially if they are on the verge of unleashing a dangerous creation upon the world. His preferred approach involves guiding these craftsmen through meaningful discourse, but if necessary, he will not hesitate to employ force. However, regardless of how nefarious an object may be, or the malicious inventions of its creator, Barnaral cannot bring himself to destroy any invention. Instead, he appropriates such contrivances and secures them within the unflawed vault located beneath his workshop. Positioned amidst the foothills of the Dragon Main Mountains in Nirvana, the tempered inventor's workshop is a remarkable sight. A magnificent tunnel connects the workshop to the caverns of molten sunlight beneath the mountains, where Barnaral harnesses the transformative power of his blessed forge, immersed in the radiant golden heat, conducting metallurgical wonders. Eretris. According to ancient legends, during the Age of Creation, the archdevil Garion filled a vast pit in the infernal realm of Stygia with an overflow of deceit. Amid the weight of these falsehoods, a single truth resounded, breaking free from the clutches of the fifth layer of hell and ascending to the celestial plains. This truth was none other than Eretris. Eretris, a figure of strength and grace, stands tall at eight feet in height. Her form embodies feminine power adorned with a pale brown pelt. A lioness's head crowns her noble visage, her eyes shimmering like precious amethysts, 
She is commonly depicted wearing a rose-colored breastplate and a short leather kilt. Remarkably, Eretrice possesses a voice so captivating that those who listen to her words often forget her striking appearance. Devoted to spreading truth and wisdom throughout the world, Eretrice holds the belief that insights gained through lively debates hold greater value than knowledge acquired from mere books. Her emissaries promote discourse and respectful disagreement, encouraging the exchange of ideas. In regions where lies cloak the air and truth remains obscured, Eretrice and her devoted followers aid righteous individuals in conveying essential messages. Garion and his minions naturally stand as the heart speaker's sworn enemies, and their history is punctuated by titanic battles waged between the two of them. Eretrice the heart speaker has established her abode upon the expansive sun-kissed plains of Nirvana. When entertaining guests, Eretrice accommodates them within a magnificent pavilion crafted from chestnut wood, its walls gracefully open to reveal the serene grasslands, while the interior spaces are separated by flowing shantung curtains, adding an air of elegance to the ambience. Halkamora. Halkamora is the daughter of Erastel and Jaidi, and is the sister of Kernunos. She is a goddess of gardens and wine, but I won't discuss her in more detail here, as I've already covered Halkamora in my second Pathfinder religion guide when I discuss Erastel. However, I will note that Halkamora is an Agathian and counts herself among the Agathian imperial lords. Erez. Erez is the imperial lord of scrolls, cards, and scribes. She is said to have emerged from the dense undergrowth of reeds that line the coasts of the Sea of No Shadows in Nirvana, and possesses deep knowledge of the esoteric symbolism embedded within runes, particularly how runes can be used to empower arcane magic. Followers of the Lady of Inscribed Wonder often have a deep interest in divinations and games of chance. She is also said to impart the meticulous craft of calligraphy to her favored disciples. She is, unsurprisingly, a patron to harrowers and other fortune-tellers that use cards or symbols in their divinations. Her palace is a remarkable blend of intricately woven reed floors, delicate paper walls, and sturdy bamboo roofs, seemingly delicate enough to be swept away by a strong gust of wind, yet being a structure that has remained unharmed for countless millennia. Jades Jades firmly believes in the transformative power of compassion to turn the fearful and the untested into brave souls, ready to face the unknown. He treads lightly, mindful of not startling those who seek his wisdom, offering assistance to discover the reservoir of strength within themselves. In his divine manifestation, Jades appears as an imposing black tiger, adorned with ethereal white spots. However, when he ventures into the mortal realm, he often assumes the form of a dark-skinned man with thick black hair streaked with strands of white. His feline-like golden eyes shimmer in the shadows, and his hands bear curved golden claws. Even in his human guise, he proudly displays a long black tail tipped with white. Jades draws reverence from amid the anxious and the untested. The young, in particular, are captivated by the allure of the fearless claw, aspiring for courage to confront the challenges of adulthood. Jades teaches those that lack bravery that they should not be scorned but guided, and his emissaries frequently present tests of courage to those who underestimate their own potential. Residing atop the highest tier of the Dragon Main Mountains on Nirvana, Jades occupies an exquisite pavilion crafted from black walnut. Its walls boast intricate latticework of gold, while floor-length curtains made of emerald green, magenta, and indigo cascade throughout the interior. Kurada. Kurada transcends the boundaries of age, existing in a timeless state of wisdom and presence. His form is adorned with sparsely scattered light brown fur, and behind him, three monkey tails continuously twist and writhe like flickering flames. Unarmed and serene, the open hand of harmony carries no weapons, when provoked, he relies solely on his hands and the accumulated knowledge of millennia of martial training to protect himself, refusing to inflict lethal harm upon his assailants. Depending on the region and local concepts of enlightenment and peace, Karada's holy symbol take various forms, though the most prevalent depiction portrays two figures kneeling before a lotus. Those burdened by a lifetime of discord or violence seek solace in Karada, yearning for inner peace. Retired warriors, their hands stained with the weight of bloodshed, relinquish their weapons forever in devotion to this celestial lord. Similarly, diplomats navigating unfamiliar territories, individuals grappling with moral dilemmas, and even former evildoers who crave absolution all find solace in the teachings of the open hand of harmony. While genuine repentance is necessary for evil to transform into good, Korada firmly believes that no mortal is beyond redemption. Though gifted with foresight, Kurada seldom acts upon these enigmatic visions. 
he embraces the belief that the endeavor to change is always worthwhile, even if the journey doesn't always culminate in success. For Karada and his followers, the process itself holds greater significance than the final outcome. When not imparting lessons of harmony to his devoted disciples, Kurada resides within the heart of Nirvana, in the Dream Lotus, a resplendent palace adorned with violet walls that perpetually blossom and drip with cool golden nectar, capable of soothing even the most unruly of spirits. Loris Loris the Saviour Hound is a canine-headed Agathian lord and a demigod of charity and volunteering. He is a patron to the disabled and the disadvantaged, and his servitors watch over such members of a society and encourage others around them to provide them with appropriate comfort and support where they can. Lithertida. Lithertida the Voiceless is an avian Agathian lord and a demigod of idealism and potential. She watches over and consoles the frightened souls of those whose lives have ended too soon. Many of her Agathian and Fu creature servants are in fact the evolved spirits of such souls who may have opportunity in the afterlife to find the fulfillment that was denied them in life. On Disso. On Disso, the stalwart stare is a bee-like Agathian lord and a demigod of incorruptibility and resisting temptation. He is a patron to those who seek to better themselves and overcome the negative aspects of their natures, and whose teachings encourage one to rise above temptation to greater heights of strength and goodness. Rodrosh According to Kellid legend, the caribou deer, horses, and sheep were originally solitary creatures, vulnerable to predators as they roamed alone. In their plight, it is said that the imperial lord Rodrosh took pity on them and imparted the wisdom of travelling together. Rodrosh possesses the ability to assume the form of any herd animal, and often traverses the mortal realm in such guises. In his truest manifestation, he bears the robust physique of a tan-skinned man adorned with the head of a ram. Cascades of bronze curls drape his face, shoulders, and chest, while two magnificent ram's horns, crafted from moonstone, arch gracefully from his temples, their weights effortlessly carried. Clutched within his left hand, he wields a straight birch staff that strikes with a might of iron. Those responsible for tending herds and caring for animals hold Rodrosh in reverence. His emissaries offer guidance to benevolent shepherds and herders, imparting knowledge on disease prevention among livestock and proper care for expectant animals, especially in regions where such wisdom remains scarce. Rodrosh harbors a particular disdain for skiers and wargs, and his agents diligently work to eradicate these savage beasts, often going out of their way to do so. Upon the vast plains of Nirvana, Rodrosh nurtures celestial steeds destined to serve as mounts for divine warriors. Without a permanent abode, he finds contentment in perpetually traversing the higher realms alongside his divine herd, eternally roaming. She She embodies the virtues of patience and wisdom, cultivated over countless millennia, aspiring to guide others towards the profound self-awareness she has attained. Through serene contemplation, service to the community, and embracing the full spectrum of life's experiences, Shay's followers discover their true essence and revel in the liberation that accompanies complete self-acceptance. Shay's uncanny appearance emanates an aura of tranquil confidence and grace. Her slender body, concealed beneath glossy black feathers and tightly bound bandages, resembles that of a mature woman. From her elongated neck sprouts the majestic head of an ibis, and firmly clasped in her hand is a silver sickle, imminent harvest, an ever-present companion that safeguards her against unforeseen threats. Although Shea possesses the wisdom of age, the fervent passion of youth burns within her, rendering her an unpredictable force to be reckoned with even in the most auspicious of circumstances. The eternal cycle of life lies within Shea's realm. Her diverse retinue encompasses dragonflies that live and perish within a year, as well as ancient treants that have stood sentinel for centuries. The Ibis Matron comprehends every stage of existence, from infancy to old age, and perceives life's purpose as the attainment of self-actualization. Seekers of enlightenment, parents raising young children, expectant mothers on the verge of bringing forth life, and educators nurturing their students' growth all pay homage to Shea. The elderly are particularly drawn to her, knowing that the Ibis Mother understands the weight of their lengthy lives. Those who coerce others into conforming to uncomfortable molds invoke her wrathful judgment, as do fiends who corrupt mortals and deprive them of their inherent potential. Uskieria Uskieria is an Agathian imperial lord who resembles a giant red bear with gold-streaked fur, and she is associated with patience, hunting, and hibernation or sleep. She and her agents teach hunters to respect the animals they kill and preserve their hunting grounds. She is a goddess that teaches prudence in judgment and to be thoughtful about a decision before it is made. 
In addition to being worshipped by hunters and the prudent, because of her association with deep sleep, insomniacs will sometimes also play to Uskiaria to get a proper night's rest. Ilimancha. Ilimancha assumes her vigilant watch over the world's coastlines, engaged in an eternal struggle with Pazuzu for dominion over the souls of those who would call the skies their home. The conflict between the imperial lord of the coasts and the king of the wind demons originated at the dawn of time, when they fiercely contended for the allegiance of the newly formed winged beings. Each race lost to Pazuzu's corrupting influence fuels Ilimancha's deep-seated resentment. Manifesting in two distinct forms, Ilimancha exemplifies her divine nature. One guise portrays a woman adorned with the head of an osprey, wielding a teak longbow strung with gold. The other form depicts a beautiful Verisian woman, bearing the head of a pure white seagull. In both forms, Ilimancha possesses the gift of speech, her words echoing with the serene resonance of crashing waves. Agents acting on behalf of Ilimancha dedicate themselves to safeguarding coastlines and protecting the mortal inhabitants dwelling near the waters. She instructs fisherfolk on the art of locating schools of marine creatures, while also reminding them against exploiting the sea's abundance. According to Ilimancha's devoted followers, it was she who imparted the knowledge of constructing breakwaters, shielding port cities from the corrosive power of mighty waves. Residing within a resplendent golden area atop the skyward cliffs, which majestically tower against the Sea of No Shadows in Nirvana, Ilimancha holds her abode. From this vantage point, she upholds her divine duties and oversees the vast expanse of the coastal realm. Mm-hmm.